Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Maurice Wernick. I'm a professor at Stanford there at the Institute for um, Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine. It's my great pleasure to have with me today uh, Sally Temple, who is the program chair uh, of this annual uh, ICCR meeting, as well as Christine Mummery, uh, who is the current president of the ICCR. And I have uh, collected a few questions today for them, uh, just to get a little bit of an uh, idea, like how the ICMR meeting will be this year. So let's start with you, Christine. Christine, what sets this meeting apart from other ICCR annual meetings? So we all always have a, a stellar program of speakers and we cover the whole area of stem cell research. But what's different this year, we've divided everything up into themes. So there are five themes that go through the whole meeting. And the idea is it's kind of like meetings within meetings. So, um, and we've also, because it's virtual, we split it up over a number of days. So instead of having, let's say four concurrent or five concurrent sessions, usually four, um, we've made it into two. So that means you have much, you have to choose less uh, what you're actually going to follow. So we think it's it's an equally exciting program. We have absolutely wonderful speakers and sessions, but dividing it up into these sessions uh, is going to help everybody navigate where they want to be. Right. Hey, Sally, so what would you say to a trainee in our field who is considering whether or not to attend the ICCR 2021? Oh, Absolutely attend. Uh, there are so many opportunities to network with your peers and with leaders in your chosen area of research. Uh, and there's tons of new career development and job seeking opportunities. Um, many of you have already submitted an abstract, but if not, you can continue to submit through April the 7th and then you'll find that there's a 24 hour poster hall, lots of opportunity to present in a, a scheduled video format, for example. So I think it can really help get the word out about, about you, your research, your interests, and help with those networking and job seeking opportunities. Um, and just one other thing, because we don't have to pay for a physical meeting, we've actually been able to make it very uh, competitively priced. And if you register before April the 21st, then you can attend the pre-meeting workshop on clinical translation for no cost. So attend and sign up early. That is amazing. Sounds like a really unique meeting this year. We have an amazing lineup of speakers, speakers who are at the uh, cutting edge of the field. And so this is an opportunity to learn about the latest and most impactful research and clinical application of stem cell research uh, around the world. Uh, each of the days is designed around the five scientific themes that will guide the attendees to the key sessions that are most aligned with their research interests. You can go look at tissue stem cells and regeneration or new technologies or modeling development and disease. Uh, investigations of cellular identity and clinical ap applications. Those are the main themes. And there's lots of opportunities to interact within the communities within those themes. And then of course, to go across communities um, to explore new areas. So uh, I, I think that the theme-based programming is really, really going to help people identify where they fit, where they're most comfortable, and get the most out of the meeting. So I think uh, first-time attendees will be, whether they're trainees or more senior people, will be surprised how much they can learn uh, because uh, it's been tra the tradition that people do uh, present results that are they might be impressed, but they're certainly not out. Uh, and that's been our tradition uh, for a long time. Um, and, and it means that you really are at the forefront of what's going on. So it may help you guide your experiments. There's all sorts of uh, benefits you could have 
by being there. We have um, some fantastic panel sessions. Um, we're really particularly excited about those. So uh, we have um, one on the, the new guidelines. So many of our sort of uh, trusted members, but maybe our new members don't know, we have the guidelines um, for stem cell research. Uh, and these are actually even guide the major journals in what's ethically acceptable to publish. Um, so so they're, they're widely used also by regulators and by government agencies to evaluate whether a grant is uh, uh, acceptable or not in terms of its ethic profile. Uh, because the, the stem cell field is so diverse and here at ISSCR, we really showcase the global effort and we want to make sure that we are representing trainees right through to senior researchers and the full diversity uh, of, of the people that are involved and should be involved in the field. What we're trying to do as a society is to anticipate what's coming. We know what's coming in the science, but the, you know, the general public doesn't feel overwhelmed by what we discover. So um, we have a panel on that as well. So Sally, as, as, the, as the program chair, um, we, are, we all know that uh, usually during the plenary sessions, there will be also a number of award winners uh, presenting. So who are they this year? Oh, so we, we are absolutely thrilled. Uh, the lineup of award winners is, is just uh, extraordinary. Um, we're going to hear, for example, for the Outstanding Young Investigator Award that recognizes you know, the pioneers, the, the uh, young researchers who are just laying down and forging new path. We'll be recognizing Madeline Lancaster. Uh, so many people around the world are excited about using um, the neural organoid systems that she has uh, pioneered in her own lab and advanced in her own lab. So we're going to be hearing from her on Tuesday. Um, as another example, we're, we're going to hear from Vivian Tabar, who will give the John McNeish lecture, and that will be on the last day. Uh, Vivian is an extraordinary scientist, also a chair of neurosurgery at Memorial Sloan Kettering. So she's able to do both cutting edge research and also impressive uh, clinical work. And she is gonna be talking about the application of stem cells for Parkinson's disease and the work that led to the founding of Blue Rock, which is a major company in this, uh, in this space. In addition, we're gonna hear from Susanna Chuva, who'll be giving the McLaren lecture, um, from S Stuart Orkin, Janet Rosson, Valentina Greca, and Sean Morrison. And uh, they will all be honored uh, with awards, with ISSCR awards, and I know they'll give uh, fabulous lectures. Hey Sally, so who will be the keynote speaker of your meeting? Oh, so the meeting uh, will end with a keynote by Shinya Yamanaka. So this will be a, a superb ending for what we anticipate to be uh, a truly exciting meeting. And uh, I also want to mention in, in addition to those award uh, lectures, we're going to present an award uh, to Robin Lovell Badge. This is a public service award in recognition for all of the work he's, he's done over the years, uh, including uh, chairing the ISSCR guidelines committee this year. Christine, so um, in an in-person meeting, you know, we have this, this huge exhibit hall with all the, all the vendors uh, and which is also a great opportunity to walk around and look for new technologies emerging, you know, uh, tools and so forth. How, how did you deal, this, deal with this issue this year in the virtual format? That's a, a really good question. And to start off with, we're absolutely delighted that so many of our uh, sponsors for the meeting have been co completely loyal, even though it's a, um, a virtual meeting. And they will have an exhi exhibition hall, uh, which they can show 
their new technologies and you can talk to people and see what's going on because that's really one of the drivers of the most exciting new research. Can you see what your cells are doing? Can you measure what they're doing? Um, and all this technology is, is really important. So the sponsors um, are important, but also the exhibit hall will uh, allow the companies to show what, which goods they have. And of course we have the innovation showcases. So then they, uh, of course, we always have that at different times, usually before the meetings or early morning. Um, but they will still be part of this virtual meeting. And that's when scientists get to show what they've done with particular products of particular companies. So again, these have all been still supported by our sponsors, which we're absolutely delighted about. Um, and we'll be really keen to see the new technologies they've got to offer this year. Um, so we do think it's absolutely necessary to keep uh, connected. And, and over the years of going there, you know, I think nearly all of us, senior or junior, know we found new people at ISSER or the other way around. Our students and postdocs have found new jobs and they're doing extremely well, often very you know, independent PIs. Um, but to, to have inspiration from each other's areas, uh, I mean, the number of times developmental biology or informatics or all of these different areas which we call emerging technologies have inspired us um, it's driven the field forward and and it's an opportunity not just to sort of do your own little thing but to see what other people are doing and what technologies they use and what imaging they use so it's a fantastic opportunity to keep together i think it's really important so um, thank you so much, both of you. I've, I've really uh, learned a lot and I have a very good idea now how the IC, uh, ICR meeting will look like this year. And I will certainly attend and I hope everybody who listens to this will have the same impression that I have now. Mm -hmm. So thank you much. Uh, thank you so much again and um, looking forward to see you at the meeting. Thank you.